Sheffield United's ambitions was always to return to the Premier League this season. And but for a wonder goal from Wade Elliott at Wembley, the Blades would have returned to the Premier League. But that aside, it was still a super season for Kevin Blackwell and the Blades way. The 2007-2008 season saw Kevin Blackwell take over at the lane and the team's end of season running showed he already had a side that was capable of challenging. It was a, a fairly strong squad that I inherited but clearly, you know, uh, um, Steady, uh, Rob Holtz, Luton Shelton, all these people were, were on the bench not getting games, uh, you know, um, because obviously the former James Beattie when I came in and, and Billy Sharp put us on that unbelievable run towards the end of last season which saw us get all bar for the first 30 minutes of the last game of the season in the playoffs. So we'd gone from fourth from bottom to that point up there. Um, so I looked at it there and it was about balancing books. You know, it's all right sitting with players on the bench, but um, we had to make sure that financially it was right for the club as well. We had good offers for the team and uh, that all the players concerned and it was proven to be the right thing because the club went on and on from there. As well as the high profile departures, David Cottrell arrived from Wigan, Darius Henderson from Watford, as well as Sunji High from Manchester City. And the Blades dabbled in the loan market by picking up Greg Halford. Coming here in, in the summer months, what, what were your thoughts when Sheffield United asked you to come down here? I, I really didn't have to think about it. Um, you know, I, I jumped at a chance. Um, obviously things didn't work out at Sunderland. I knew I was going out on loan again for the season. And it was a chance for, for regular first team football and um, a chance to get promoted as well, so I, I jumped at a chance. Well, yeah, you know, I think uh, Greg came uh, sort of early doors and then, uh, you know, Darius Henderson came in mm. as well. You know, I, I, I think Darius was decided, you know, while we were away on, uh, on pre season tour. You know, I think mm. um, obviously the decision was made to sell Robles to, uh, to Derby, so the gaffer felt that we needed another front man. So, you know, I think. Uh, as, as he said all along, I think Darius was his uh, was his main target. Well, Darius was obviously my one big signing because uh, it was you know such was James Beattie's form and the speculation about James that I didn't actually think we were going to start the season with him anyway. Um, so in respect, you know, Darius was the, was the, going to be the, the main focal point of the, of the attack if if Beats had gone. Uh, it just so happened that Beats stayed and Darius picked up a knee ligament injury and. Uh, uh, but I think he, he added he had his, he had power to the a good leadership, uh, a good fulcrum to the to the top of the team, and uh, you know when the ball goes into him he, he can hold it and he's got a, a fearsome reputation in this division. David Cottrell was a late addition to the squad. When you signed him, he was one of the standout performers of the previous season. What were you hoping to add when when you did pick him up eventually? Well, I mean we, we were looking for him to be you know exactly what he did when he he came you know get at people down the line getting crosses in supply and ammunition. And James Beattie uh, definitely, you know, thrived on that. Well, boss Kevin Blackwell named five of his six new signings in the squad that took on the championship favourites, Birmingham City, an elite curtain raiser shown live on Sky Sports from St Andrews. And has had a clear. Hammer back in, and that was a wonderful save. Gary Speed almost producing the first goal of the game. They come again by O'Connor, finds Phillips! Oh, he's done it! He has done it again! The first goal of the championship season, and it's Kevin Phillips of Birmingham who scores it, and that will secure his new club. An early start away at Birmingham, was that for you though in some respects a bit of a blessing because you, you got an early test as to your championship credentials? I think it certainly put a marker down, um, you know Birmingham arguably the, you know, the favourites to go back up, strongest squad, biggest budget and it was always going to be a real tester and I thought we came through it brilliantly. Um, just so disappointed to see the goal scored in the 93rd minute 
um, and we had no chance to reply. But I think we put a marker down. I think people decided then and there that Sheffield United and Birmingham were going to be the two, two teams that would be up and around the top six. After a midweek Carling Cup victory, it was Billy Sharp who took centre stage as the Blades opened their championship account at home to QPR. Holford with a throw 15 yards in from the corner flag. Morgan's in there, so too Henderson, Sharp close by, speared in towards Henderson, Sharp! He's on the mark! It's Billy Sharp's first goal of the championship season! It has taken only two minutes! A long, devastating throw from Greg Halford and a comfortable header for Billy Sharp, six yards out. The Blades on target, Blades one, Queen's Park Rangers nil. Ledgetwood dispossessed by Gary Speed, who set, sends Billy Sharp down the middle of the QPR half. Billy Sharp is going to run through a goal. Can he finish? Yes, he can! Billy Sharp gets a second for Sheffield United. What a fantastic start this has been to Sheffield United's first league game at the lane. We've only played 12 minutes, but Billy Sharp has scored twice. Quinn on the edge of the D. Speed not too far away either. Tong... Tong with a corner. Goal line scramble here, it's 3-0, it's a hat-trick for Billy Sharp. Corner swung in from Michael Tong on the left-hand side. QPR at sixes and sevens, Ekiog was in there, but there was Billy Sharp. Goal poacher extraordinaire, his first hat-trick as a blade. He's been inspired today, he's on fire, as are the blades generally. Sheffield United three, Queen's Park Rangers nil. Talk us through the three, how well do you remember them? Um, I'm I remember my first being a, um, an early goal from a, just a reaction from a flick, I think it was from Morgs, and uh, good to see the goal go in. And then uh, the second one was when uh, Speedo played it over the top and ran through and managed to slot that one away. And the third one was a bit of a scramble and just desperate to get on the end of it and tapped it in from about a yard, so that was nice. How did it feel to, to do that in front of the cop? Uh, when I'd got my two early goals, I, I was you know, thinking about it and mm. thinking I'll just let it come. If it's going to come, it'll come. And when it bounced and sat there and all I had to do was tap it in, I was ready and just ran away and couldn't believe it. The following week, it was an afternoon at Blackpool and the Blades in their new black strip ran out 3-1 winners. United with Billy Sharp drags the ball into the box. It's brought down. Henderson looks like it strikes a hand. United, though, with a chance. It's Quinn! Fine finish, bottom corner, and the Blades have the lead. Corner kick, swung in from the left, it's headed up in the air, United can battle for this. Egiog's under it, headed away. The referee though spotted something, it will be a penalty kick. Well Blackpool unhappy, but United from the spot. Keeper goes the right way, but Speed will score, and United double their advantage. Blackpool down the left-hand side. Trying to work the ball high into the box. There's a chance for Kilgallen to head away. Volley will come. Kenny nowhere to be found. And it's the former blade, Stephen Cabber, who smashes home. United, back post, another chance, quick volley. Greg Halford finishes with a plump and Sheffield United seal victory. The final match of August saw United's unbeaten run continue in front of a bumper crowd at Bramall Lane. But with both teams' defences on top form, it was the Welshman Gary Speed, a worthy contender for man of the match. First month of the season, what was your take on, on what the Championship had to offer? The first month was, I thought, a consolidation month, making sure that we picked up enough victories to see us in and around the top half of the table. And I think we were 10th or something like that. So we were in a nice position there. We'd, we'd got a few points. And then you start to see the teams that have been down the bottom already. Charlton had struggled. Norwich were struggling. You know, uh, some of the teams that, that were down there didn't start well. Nottingham Forest were struggling. And, and that seemed to be the picture for the whole of the season. So I was, I was pleased to be up and around the top. And that gave us a chance to build on from there. Sometimes in football, you just know when things are going to happen. And when the Blades went to Pride Park, Derby hadn't won in over a year in the league. They also had ex-Blade Rob Hulse, who hadn't scored in an eternity. And after Darius Henderson netted his first goal for the Blades, it looked like it was going to be a good day for United. But sadly, all that proved to be in vain. 
finally goes long again, just over the head of Addison. And a good turn by Hulse. And he was down, and I think he tipped it onto the post. Stewart. Here's Green. Paul Green for Derby County. Solid challenge by Morgan. Just starting to warm up a little bit this match. Deflected cross. And a goal for Derby County! Well, they waited for it, and Paul Green claims that he was the one who pushed it across the line. Good pace by Jordan Stewart to try to get there ahead of Sharp. He's doing enough, hasn't he, Stewart? Halford now. Henderson! 1-1. That's just what you don't want, you've just got your goal, you tighten things up, it's that high line again look, it's too high for me, it's too easy to break down, and this is easy as well, nobody picks up the runner, Alford puts a great ball in, and Henderson doesn't miss them, that's his strength, gets in there, away from Carroll, half comes and then, convincingly beaten. Here on the ball here, and Barazit with the cut back, comes through the house! Well, they're calling for handball, Sheffield United. It's ended. Rob Hulse, 18 months without a goal, scores against his former club. And maybe, just maybe, Derby County's winless run is coming to an end. It wasn't to be this time for Sheffield United. But three days later, they did earn a share of the spoils on a busy night at Bramall Lane, where there was a penalty and a sending off. Big run up, speared in right over the six yard box, could go anywhere far post, Tab 1 0. The Blades trail, J Tab pouncing on a long throw from Gunnarsson. Well, the Blades uh, have uh, kept it as it was at the end of the first half, but Coventry have made a change. Michael Mifsud has replaced Leon McKenzie, but the Blades fans, and no doubt Kevin Blackwell, wanting to see a big improvement. But Mifsud's in down the other end, he's got clear of Sanji High, goes down in the box, it's going to be a penalty here. To Coventry, Mifsud on as a half-time substitute, brought down by Sunji High. And a centre-half is going to take the penalty. Elliot Ward in front of the cop, faced by Paddy Kenny, and he's missed. Let off for the Blades at the start of the second half. Will that provide them with the lift that they so desperately need? They still trail by a goal to nil. <laughs> oh, Sunji High flies in with a challenge. The referee scores over. Straight oh, red card. Absolute nightmare for the Blades here. Cottrell. Now Montgomery and Quinn. Cottrell level with the area. Right hand side. The Blades one down. Jinx one way, then the other. Heads to the byline. Beats his marker. Sends the ball in front post. Sharp turn and shot. Great finish, Billy Sharp. The Blades back in it. One moment of magic we said would get the Blades back in it. And it's Billy Sharp with his foot. Fourth goal of the season, neat spin six yards out from Cottrell's cross. It is all square, and can the Blades take it on from here? Blades one, Coventry one. After a defeat away at Carrow Road and a thumping in the League Cup by Arsenal, it was time for the Blades to pick themselves up for the final home game of September against Watford. Sheffield-born teenager Kyle Norton received his full debut. He's a player would go on to see plenty of through the course of the season. A couple of former Blades within that. Watford lineup, including Lee Bromby and John Harley, as the throw speared in towards Morgan, towards the back post. This is a chance for the Blades. Chance has scored! Gary Speed converts in the opening minute, and Sheffield United are off and running. The long throw worked wonders for the Blades. Worked back across by Billy Sharp, and from three feet out, unchallenged, Gary Speed slams the ball home. Sheffield United won, Watford nil. Corner kick on the far side. Smith to take, whips it in right footed, very, very deep. Here's the chance back post, it's O'Toole. Has it gone in? It has, the linesman's given it. Paddy Kenny looked like he pulled it from behind the line. Here's Naismith. That's a lot of Billy Sharp. Balls up in the air. Sharp uses his body well, but it's cleared away. Here's Naismith. In towards Quinn. Quinn not got much movement ahead of him. Goes down a bit of a blind alley, but now does find Billy Sharp. Sharp got Naismith making a run into the box instead, though he crosses towards the back post, it's Beattie, oh, he scored! First 
rest of the season for James Beatty. But what a super, super cross from Billy Sharp. He had nowhere to go and he whipped a great ball out of nowhere, deep to the back post. And there was Beatty. He was a bit scruffy, he was a bit scrappy, but he's off and running. James Beatty. The game was also the home league debut of Kyle Norton, a player that had gone to impress everyone through the course of the season. What do you remember about that day? Um, can't remember much really. It's just like I just I just blank things out and just get on with my job. So all I can remember is the day before, just the gaffer saying, "Oh, you're starting," and then from there, I, I don't know really. It's just just all happened so quick. You can't really remember much. Next up, a South Yorkshire derby, and the Blades chalked up a second consecutive win on their first ever visit to the Keepmoat Stadium. Quick throw taken down the left. Sheffield United try to build in this one. Perhaps have the better of things. Is here's Weber. Weber drills one across. Could be a chance. Well, I think that's gone in. I think it's probably an own goal. Good skill from Weber. As he drives across in. Ball takes a big deflection, and James O'Connor puts through his own net. Stop with a corner kick. Quick header. Good save. Oh, I tell you what, that was close. Rovers really should be back in it. Byfield misses. Guilt edge. Oh, he doesn't know how that happened. Wood squares it off. Now here's Brian Stock. Takes a, a chance. Now he's in shooting range. Still Stock off the bar. I don't know whether Kenny got a touch to that one, but Brian Stock with a real chance. Now Woods finds Price in the box. Price, another chance. Cleared away by Kenny and Sheffield United are under siege right now. Mills gives possession away. United, that's a cultured ball forward. Now here's Stephen Quinn, edge of the box, real chance. Quinn! Against the run of play, Sheffield United lead by two goals to nil. Good hold up play. And eventually, lovely ball through. Beatty finds Quinn. Quinn, quick touch. And bang. Rovers trying to get one back here. It's with O'Connor. Cross will be delivered in. It's broken up. Edge of the area. This could be a chance, though. Another opportunity. And again, well, Doncaster Rovers guilty of not taking their chances. A comedy of errors. And Darren Byfield, for the second time in this match, misses out. A handshake's not much consolation. That final game in September left Sheffield United in sixth place in the league, having collected 14 points in their first nine games. A tremendous home performance next as United outclassed last season's playoff finalist, Bristol City. Kenny's long kick, beating. Finds Cottrell coming in off the right side. We look to jink his way into this box. What a run this is by Cottrell. But it's back to Sharp who's missed his kick. Golden opportunity for Billy Sharp here at Bramall Lane. Wonderful run from David Cottrell. Sharp missed his kick. Cottrell whips it in low towards Beatty. What a thumping shot that is from James Beatty. 15 yards out. David Cottrell drills the corner in from the right hand side. Plays record signing, thumps his second goal of the season in from 15 yards out. Kenny in for beat, he got a little touch in the back but wins an excellent header on towards the left hand side for Weber. Weber looks to step in field, Danny Weber just gets tracked back, continues to play. Here's Quinn on the edge of the area, appeals for hands, it's going to drop to James Beatty to strike one. Flying save from Adriano Basso away to his right hand side. Just needed half a yard, James Beatty took it quickly but great save from Basso. <laughs> of jostling in the middle of the area, Quinn delivers it in, Kilgallen's there, it's flicked goalwards, and I think that's potentially going to be an own goal from Liam Fontaine at the back of Bristol City, Quinn with an excellent free kick delivered into the box, there was a lot of jostling around, everyone congratulating Stephen Quinn for the delivery. Whipped in from Cottrell from the near side, Beatty's there on his own! Heads it down to the ground, Billy Sharp was on the line. It's going to go through his legs, miss Adriano Basso. And James Beatty will go and celebrate in front of the cop. James 
Mike Dean was in charge of the first Steel City derby of the season and not for the last time this season he left Sheffield United fans scratching their heads. It was a cracking atmosphere at Hillsborough but the Blades unable to come home with all three points. In fact they didn't even get a share of the spoils. And Beattie will be thinking he can return to the Premier League with Sheffield United. Norton, clever little ball on the outside of the ball, beautifully played that for Cottrell. Oh, and that could have been an own goal by Beavers, as it was. He was very grateful to see that go into the crowd behind the goal. Well, he'll be so, so relieved. What about this for a run and a ball? It's a superb ball. Doesn't have to break stride, Cottrell whips it in the danger area. And Beavers has got to deal with it, and he gets lucky. I'm pretty sure he's trying to knock it wide of the goal. Ends up going over the middle of the goal. and it's a red card, he's off, Sheffield United are down to 10 men. Beavers, the goalkeeper Kane didn't get it, Watson, he's going to score, Steve Watson for Sheffield Wednesday, massive mistake. Is O'Connor goes down and it's a penalty kick. It's going to be taken by Dion Burton, who's gone 11 games without a goal. Can Paddy Kenny redeem himself here for the earlier error? Yes, he can. Well, Sheffield Wednesday unable to beat Paddy Kenny again, and neither were Southampton when the Blades drew 0-0 with the Saints at the lane. Next up, Preston North End, and only a single goal separated the two sides. It was a first for the Blades for Hugo Egiog. October ended with a point taken from another 0-0 game, this time away to Bristol City. And November began with another vital championship victory for United. Quinn intercepts now. Good play from Beattie. He's unlocked the door. This could be a chance for Weber. Still got lots of work to do. Weber, edge of the area, will strike one good save from the keeper. Plymouth will hold this one in. Corner kick. Flicked on back post and the chance just over the top. That would have been against the run of play. Quinn with a corner kick, United trying to put some pressure on, forced to Beattie, Beattie with the drive deflects wide. Well, that man's been a pain today. Quinn again floats this ball in, a chance on the volley for United. Flashes just wide, great connection. Well, it's been a frustrating time for the Blades so far. Can James Beattie do anything about it? That's another good ball out to Weber. On that right-hand side, still Danny Weber. Works it into the box now. Oh, is that a penalty kick? Well, the Blades will appeal, and the referee's given it. Good work from Weber, and as the ball came into the box, in the end, it was just an agricultural bit of defending. No question. And it falls to the man who loves to score, James Beattie! Accuracy and power from the spot. Beattie is the man, and the Blades have the lead. Long clearance from Kenny. United can win the second ball here, it's with speed. Now Stephen Quinn, to speed again, right-footed ball forward. United just won't give this one up right now, the ball's in the box, it's a chance, it's Billy Sharp, goes on the outside of his man, pulls it all the way back, United queuing up! Well, what a stop, in the end they just about managed to get everything over it. Good play from Billy Sharp, unselfish, and as Beattie struck it, well, 
in the end, Plymouth managed to keep it out. United extended their unbeaten run to five games in an exciting and controversial match at Oakwell against Barnsley. The Blades 1-0 winners here last season in the snow and the ice. Billy Sharp the scorer. There is Stephen Quinn. That's a cute bit of play to find Weber. Spinning in the box. Weber back post. Oh, forced home. It's James Beattie. Brave goal for the Blades. They have the lead in this South Yorkshire derby. Beatty just about back post. There's a bit of trouble off the ball here. Anderson De Silva and Hugo Ekiog. Forehead to forehead and it's going to be red cards. Ekiog dismissed. And Anderson De Silva, well he gets his marching orders too. And this one is red hot. High ball forward into the boxes. Off the head, I think, of Kozluk, but the linesman's flagging on halfway. Well, I think that the linesman who's a long way from the play is going to give the penalty here. Did that come off an arm? Well, I think the jury's out. Penalty, though, and James Beatty will take. Beatty spins. Second of the game. No mistake. Blades will win this one. A fiery affair, and three points will surely now be coming back to Bramall Lane. Here's Campbell Rice for the Reds. Everyone's backing off him here, still Jamal Campbell Rice. Plenty of time of possession here for Campbell Rice. Slides it down the right hand side. Coslett with the cross. Led away by Kilgallen. Not completed though, as there's a strong challenge in the area. Dinked back in again and another chance and a goal. With the Blades in great form, I think everyone's appetite was whetted for the arrival of Reading, one of the form teams in the early part of the season. And when Kevin Doyle laid on an early goal, it was Reading who looked to take the three points. They grabbed a second in the first half when the Irishman dived full length to beat Paddy Kenny. The Blades, though, certainly not disgraced by their performance, the result perhaps not reflecting some of the play they had. One of the signatures for Kevin Blackwell's side is their ability to bounce back from disappointments. And having lost to Reading, it was a super performance away at Charlton to get the Blades back to winning ways. Here's Howard. Out to the left-hand side and Stephen Quinn. Quinn's got plenty of space out there as he delivers in early. Blades with a real chance here. Can they get there at the back post? It's with Halford. Halford pulls it back. BT! United have the lead in a flowing move. Length of the field. It looked like the chance was gone here, but there was Halford. Unselfish, pulls it back to Beatty. And eventually it deflects home, the United lead. Ball into the Blades box. Oh. Well, I'll tell you what, that was poor marking in the six-yard box. All the space in the world. It's 1-1. Blades free kick, floated in. It's a flick header. All the way through, goodness me. Uh, from the sublime to the ridiculous. United back in front. Diving header. Another corner kick for the Blades. Out as far as Kyle Norton. He drills one in. We'll get a second chance. It's an up and under into that area. There's a mistake. Now here's a chance for Kilgallen. Well, he loops it in. Charlton won't be happy with this one. A real soft bit of goalkeeping. Kilgallen will float a right foot as it. And United lead by three goals to one. Long throw from the Blades into the box. Here's Morgan. Takes a deflection. Well, I'll tell you what. It's an afternoon to forget for Charlton Athletic. An own goal. The Blades will come away with victory from the Valley. Good challenge from speed now Quinn the United dominance away from home today Billy Sharp Sharp good ball to the back post what a finish oh my word the best of the bunch super ball though from Billy Sharp lots of credit for him and Stephen Quinn great technique
Charlton. Move the ball down that right-hand side. Really have struggled this season so far as it's worked towards the byline. Now the cross will come into the area. They're lining up here. Nothing more than consolation in the end. United caught short at the back. Good finish. Sheffield United return to Bramall Lane to face another of the top sides in the division as Mick McCarthy's Wolves arrived. It was going to be another tough task and despite another great performance from Sheffield United, they didn't get anything out of the fixture. It's a real battle between two of the form teams of the division as the ball goes into the box. Here's Iwalumo on the angle, still Iwalumo! What a finish! He's been the hottest striker so far in the championship and Chris Iwalumo gives Wolves the lead. Wolves again come forward, it's with Henry. Into the box, Spring tracks him, now the ball comes in, Iwalumo again! Well it's two for him, and perhaps against the run of play, Wolves have doubled their advantage. They're happy, United perhaps aren't. Wolves again, moving forward, it's an opportunity here on the edge of the area, it's Kitely into the area, here's Ebanks Blake, oh Thunderbolt, great finish, and Sheffield United don't know what's hit them, they play good football, a long throw into the box, it comes off Beatty, his spring, off the foot of the post and in, the final game in November was one of penalty drama as both sides scored from the spot and there's plenty of controversy at Portman Road. Well, these two know each other pretty well. As a shot comes in. Ooh, that nearly embarrassed Paddy Kenny. Here's Stead. Ball into the box. Deflects off Kilgallen. And scrapping for the ball in the box. Referee waves play on. Still Ipswich trying to get on the ball and now, now he looks across to his linesman. Well, what's the linesman seen? Referee points to the spot, handballs the suggestion, and it must have been for that initial ball that came in. Well, is it Kyle Norton? I've got to be honest, don't see a lot there. Controversial penalty then. Ipswich can take the lead. Kenny sent the wrong way. A calm penalty. Howard with the corner. It's floated in. Kilgallen, what a save. Well, that must have been very, very close. Dyer. Tries to send one in for United. It's edge of the area. Here's Beatty. What was that? Palmed over the top. Referee's given a penalty. Well, controversy at either end here. The shot came, and it's the former played Alan Quinn doing his best goalkeeping impression. Beatty again from the spot. Cool, calm, confident. It's 1 1. And so, after 20 games, United have moved into fifth place with 32 points. And it was another one of the top six that were next at the lane as Burnley brought their great record to Sheffield United. And it was another interesting game that ultimately ended in defeat. <laughs> Holford's throw, flicked on by Morgan, what a chance! Billy Sharp's offside. Well, United thought they had the lead. But the offside flag was probably... Well, let's see. Here's the head at Shops on side. United can feel a little aggrieved. Blake. Whips a corner in. Quick header. Oh! It's going to go in. He didn't know much about it. And Sheffield United go behind. Blake's try and break through, he's round the keeper, did Jensen bring him down? The flag's being waved, Billy Sharp was taken down and Brian Jensen is in danger of being sent off. 
The Blades will have a penalty at the end of all of this. Caldwell unimpressed. Great run from Sharp. Good touch to take it round the keeper and then there was contact. Not a great deal though. Blades leading scorer James Beattie. Quick turn. Bottom corner. His confidence is massive and his ability to put the ball in the net unrivaled at this level. The dying swan celebration. He enjoyed that, didn't he? Here's Chris Eagles. Had a spell across the town at Sheffield Wednesday. Has he taken down in the box? Well, I think from that reaction, Gary Naismith feels that this is a very harsh penalty. Eagles went on the outside. There, was, there wasn't a lot in it. Penalty, though. Eagles earned it. Now it's up to that man to try and stop it. Graham Alexander from 12 yards in front of the cop at the lane. Alexander against Kenny. And Alexander wins that battle. Kenny gets right. Here comes the corner kick. Deep to the back post. Headed off the line. Good defending. And Elliot should get this clear. Well, United had the chance here. Just nodded away. Burnley. Have another opportunity to attack. It's still with Eagles. Cuts inside. Still Eagles! Oh, oh. great finish. He claimed the penalty. And he could have claimed all three points for the side from Lancashire. Free kick for United. <laughs> Stephen Quinn. Over the wall, into the goal. Look at the movement on this. No chance for Jensen. Sublime bit of skill from Stephen Quinn. Brian Howard arrived at the football club from Barnsley with an eye for goal. And his first goal for the Blades was enough to seal a deserved victory at the city ground against old foes Nottingham Forest. United remained in that top six largely thanks to their away form and they were able to grind out victories even at places like Swansea when they were reduced to ten men thanks to a late strike from captain Chris Morgan. The Blades in South Wales and from the kickoff, well... Seems to have been a challenge here between Henderson and Rangel. And Henderson's going to get his marching orders. The referee spotted a high elbow. Well. Swansea. Really have done well so far this season. It's into the box they go. It's going to be a penalty kick. Good run from Prattley. Smith was left hanging out to dry a little bit. Where's the contact? Very close. Good finish from the spot. Jason Scotland continues his scoring streak. Blackwell unimpressed. United have been down to 10 men for a long time now. Here's Chris Morgan. Oh, is that an equaliser? It is! The blade skipper steals a point for United in South Wales. It was helped in by Howard, and somehow Morgan was free and then lobs the keeper. It's a super finish. Well, subtle stuff from Chris Morgan. has the Blades fans back in it. A pre-Christmas meeting with an old friend was always going to bring a few things to Bramall Lane, including the TV cameras, and a last gasp goal for Palace was enough to earn Neil Warnock's side a share of the spoils. Conte, 
wasn't sure that Dyer was there, but here is Dyer. Dyer now for Sheffield United, who lead 1-0. Well, that's a difficult chance to put away. One touch with his head, still a lot to do, takes a pace off it and just buries it in the bottom corner. Concentrates on hitting the target, doesn't go for power, just goes for direction. Now, can they hit right back here, Crystal Palace? Very nearly. An excellent effort from Carl, which drew the first real significant save from Penny. So Palace have their corner. First couple of minutes of this second half, Oster will take. Confusion as to who was going to claim it, and Crystal Palace do. It's Paddy McCarthy who taps his shoulder, which is dislocated. His shot is certainly not, it's found the back of the net. Quinn. Fine save, Ekio follows it in. But somehow it is kept out, that is brilliant from Spironi. It is, how many times have we seen him do these sort of things? It's a beautifully fighting free kick, it's a decent header. There he spills it, but he's got enough about him to grab at the second attempt. Wonderfully flighted ball in, attacks superbly, you think he's got it, slips out, grabs it again. Oster and Carl, the two midfielders, the two who fancy it here for Crystal Palace. Oh, he's got a terrific strike on him as we've seen so far, Carl. It's Oster, straight into the Sheffield United wall. Hey! What a brilliant effort that was. Derry drawing a fine save from Kenny and the follow-up can't be pounced on. To test Clint Hill again. He's got his cross away this time behind BT. May well have been some sharp in there. And the referee has given the penalty. Cottrell does really well, puts a decent ball in. There's the shirt. How many times have we seen that in the box in the first half? All at it, no penalty given. This time, penalty is given. a hundred percent record this season BT which remains that's a wonderful penalty and it's a wonderful scoreline for Sheffield United I'll tell you what you won't see a better penalty that under pressure 88th minute one each front of your own supporters bang roof of the net look at this no danger any keeper's going to save that Barry run into the mix Morgan met it Crystal Palace with the last kick of the match have salvaged something through Nick Carl. It was the final throw of the dice and it has come up trumps for the Eagles. Boxing Day at Molyneux was what was in store for Sheffield United and it was a stirring performance as the Blades got a share of the spoils and probably deserved more from their trip to the West Midlands. What a game on Boxing Day for Sheffield United. Wolves the team to beat in the championship and it's been a good one so far as the first chance comes just wide. Kitely with the corner kick. It's a very deep one, quick header. Ian Bennett beats him. Here's Dyer for the Blades. Moves it out towards the right hand side. Quick cross will come in towards that six yard box. There was a thought of handball, play continues though here's Quinn, stands one up back post Norton drills one in, chance his BT well rumours about his futures are abound but BT just continues to put the ball in the back of the net it's one each it's been a cracking game so far United putting the pressure on, they've done a great job here. Ball delivered into the area, it's tapped home, it's Danny Weber. Offside flags up though. The final match of the year was a stirring second half recovery for United, led by Stephen Quinn, ensuring the Blades finish 2008 on a high note. Boatz, a neat turn, Boatz with the volley, scored! Well, that's a super bit of skill, a hammer blow from Buatza. And sensationally, the Blades trail. High ball into the back post, headed down, real chance. Goodness me, Danny Weber can't believe it. 
great deep ball into the box. And Weber, well, he'll be disappointed by that. Weber slides the ball in, it's picked off in the area. Now laid off, here's Quinn! Slipping and sliding the ball into the back of the net. Good touch, and Quinn makes no mistake. Quinn with the free kick, it's into the area. This could be a real chance, opportunity, Weber! Denied once, Weber! He atones for his earlier miss. He needed two chances, but Danny Weber sharp enough to put the blades in front. Eventually, Quinn being instrumental today with this free kick, kills it over the wall! A slider celebration for a super bit of skill. How happy were you with where you were at come Christmas time? I was very pleased, as I said, you know, um, I wanted to be in around the top ten at Christmas. I want to be around the top six at Easter and see if we could give it a good go in the last eight, and that's exactly how it worked out. So we got there and we are actually in the top six at Christmas, so I was really pleased with that. We'd got a, a platform now to, to build on, and uh, around Christmas we had some tough games, Wolves away, and, um, and we had Crystal Palace at home and, and, and people like that. And What we did was we, we, we consolidated our top six position, and that was, that was crucial around Christmas time. The irony, though, of the games previous to that, your best performances had come in defeat. It was strange, wasn't it, when you looked at it? You looked at the Reading game here, you looked at the Burnley game here, you, you know. The Wolves not, game here. The yeah. Wolves game, yeah. The, you looked at it and you'd play your best football, yet you hadn't perhaps got the results the performances deserved. No, and, and that's just what football's about, isn't it? There's, there's nothing so predictable about football that, that if people thought it was, it wouldn't come anymore. The unpredictability, and, and we'd come away, and, and how we lost at home to Wolves 3 0, I'll never know. We've battered them from start to finish. You know, Burnley, Bully Sharp said a goal disallowed in the first five minutes, which proved to be onside. And it's proven, unfortunately for us on the three occasions, that if we went behind to Burnley, the way they play, it was difficult to break them down. And, and so there were all crucial things that happened at that time. But yeah, I mean, it was a side that was being redeveloped. It was being changed as we were going along and, and, and I was bringing Plateville in. And there was just sometimes a little bit of, you know, uh, uh, lack of understanding and, and, and what we were quite wanted on some of the players that we brought in. So we had a little bit of under, underlying performances that weren't quite as good as I'd like to see, but we were still able to get results, none more so than our away record, which by then was, was well on its way to six or seven games unbeaten by Christmas. And, and that allowed us then to, to like I say, a great platform then. 2009 started with a bang and the Blades continued their winning form with Darius Henderson returning to the lineup with a goal. And the Blades three points. After beating Leighton Orient in the FA Cup third round, United then went to Vicarage Road. And it was two former Watford strikers who enjoyed their return to their former stomping ground as the Blades stretched their unbeaten run to eight games. Corner kick in towards that box, cleared off the line. Watford have had a horrendous season so far. It's United uh, going to a bit of Keystone Cop stuff here. Really do need to get that ball away as now it goes down the byline, pulled back into the area. This is a real chance of a shot for John Joe O'Toole. United, though, can scramble it away. Stephen Quinn with the corner, it's headed towards goal. Now United, the second chance, it's scrambled just about clear. Still the blades, it's Weber against his old club. Spinning, turning and scoring from six yards. And Danny Weber has the lead. Montgomery. United have been playing really well away from home. It's been such a feature of their ability to get results on their travels from... S2 as United building towards the edge of the area again. It's headed down. This could be a chance. It's with Henderson. Well, two former Hornets have scored for Sheffield United. A victory over hapless Charlton in the FA Cup followed, but South Yorkshire rivals Doncaster Rovers recorded their first ever league success at Bramall Lane to end United's nine match and beat and run just three days later. The Blades ended January with a point from a goalless draw against Preston and that kept them fifth in the league with 48 points. 
against Southampton. An injury time strike by Jamie Ward grabbed a dramatic win for the 10-man Blades at the St Mary's. Here is Halford, tries to move the ball towards goal. It's a second chance, Howard cleared off the line. Quinn, high ball to the back post, it's flicked away. Here is Lee Bromby, lays it off to Howard again. Howard spins one into the back post, Blazer there! And they can take the lead as well. A snowy evening on the south coast. And a good header at the back post. United steal in, I think it's Greg Halford, the man that got the last touch. High ball forward, there's a man rolling around on the floor. And once again, Henderson is punished with a straight red. Indiscipline from the blade striker. The Saints move down the right-hand side, tries to get one back against 10 man Sheffield United chance at the back post what a finish what a great bit of skill here's Jamie Ward the Blades new signing he's got great pace on his left boot Ward oh he's nicked it right at the death Jamie Ward will get three points for Sheffield United he loses his boot in the process he's got great pace and the man that arrived from Chesterfield has set the South Coast alight. Super finish. Following the sale of star striker James Beattie to Stoke City, Sheffield United continued to get the results away from home, but it was at Bramall Lane where expectation was starting to get the better of some fans, and with the arrival of Sheffield Wednesday imminent, the Blades really needed three points. Ball breaks towards the right-hand side now. Here's a chance for Wednesday to get the ball into that box. It comes back towards the edge of the area, what a finish! It's Tommy Spur! Opening minutes and Tommy Spur gives Wednesday the lead. Holford, long throw into the box, it comes into the area, it's broken down, has that gone in? I think it has, I think it's Arturo Lupoli. He has a steel City Derby goal and the Blades are back on terms. Two goals in the first five minutes. It's electric stuff, flips off the head of Arturo Lupoli, it's a 66 moment, it's 1-1. Long ball forward from the Blades, it's taken down 25 yards from goal. Howard is shoved to the floor, no free kick given. And now Marcus Tudgay can bring it away. Long way from goal. Here's Tudgay. Strikes one. Ho oh, ho! Great strike. Great goal to silence Bramall Lane. So, with back to back South Yorkshire derby defeats, some fans were already heading towards the Tinsley Viaduct. But manager Kevin Blackwell was always able to keep things in proper perspective. Well, um,. It was, it was tough because I didn't think that people were standing back and looking at the bigger picture. They had definitely focused in on, on Beats leaving and, and those two results. And, um, it, you know, it was to be sitting fourth in the league in the last six in the FA Cup and, and, and everybody getting hammered. Players, management, chairman, everything. Sometimes takes, you know, a little, a little edge off you. Um, and I was disappointed, I have to say, but I could understand it as well. So from a support's point of view, to see you know, our top goal scorer go, uh, people question our lack of ambition. But sometimes you have to put the club first. In the FA Cup, United held Premier League Hall to a draw. Then it was the long away trip to Plymouth, where they had to fight back twice to defend their unbeaten away run. that's now stretched to 12 games. The Blades still trying to keep this run alive away from Bramall Lane as the Ball smashed home. Well, Plymouth take an early lead here. United static from the corner kick. Oh, awful clearance now. Here's Danny Weber. He's in on goal. He's one-on-one. -on -one. Weber! Well, United haven't played well, but they're going to take advantage of an awful mistake from Larry. Long throw into the box, it breaks, here's a shot and a goal, Gallagher scores. Yeah. 
Naismith. Can United get something? A last-ditch attempt as it goes in. Halford! Unmarked. No problem. 2-2. Two -two. That should be enough for a point. United exited the FA Cup in the replay against Hull, then went into March with a quality home performance with the pressure on against second-place Birmingham City. Sheffield United as well, without a clean sheet in their last five outings in all competitions. First real question asked here, ripped in really well, and that bounces off the bar from Marcus Brent. In there, Henderson blocked on the line and capped, caught at the second time of asking there by Mike Taylor. Well, discipline from Carl there, look at his position on the post there. Stays there, and it's a good job he did, Holford follows it up, and that is discipline of the highest quality here. Watch his position, never moves from that post. Holford follows it up, there he is, and then the keeper just grasps the follow quite comfortably. Henderson, here's Weber, chance Sheffield United, goal! Three minutes before half-time, the breakthrough from Danny Weber. Well, that's what Henderson's all about, isn't it? The quality of the ball is just what Henderson thrives on. You see the position, played in, and that is offside when it's played in for me. But Henderson does exactly the right thing, and you think the keeper will get that, I think he should do better here. He looked offside, Henderson does exactly the right thing, and you think, well, Taylor's got to do a little bit better for me there. Lovely cushion header, comes up for him. Fair play to Weber, finish it superbly in the end. But I think when it bounces up off Weber here, the goalkeeper is slightly favourite to get it, doesn't, and Weber finishes superbly. Cottrell take this one, kill Gallon, saved but followed wide somehow. Well, how did that miss? Again, the quality of the set piece is absolutely superb. Attack well by Kill Gallon, does everything right, and you think just put it in an empty net. Taylor makes a decent save, and you think follow up, back of the net. Carsley, McSheffrey, Murphy, good build up, Cameron Jerome! Birmingham City back in it, Cameron Jerome claims the goal. Morton forward on the right, he's been pushed into midfield to incorporate Lee Bromby after the calf injury forced off Halford. He's done really well, Morton. And a penalty, there was a push in the back of Beattie. Big decision by Lee Mason. Well, he's been brave in giving decisions just lately. Didn't look much contact there, did they? Seemed to be Carr who came in. Would you believe it? It is the first penalty they have conceded this season. Can Sheffield United now convert it? David Cotterill, who hasn't scored yet for the club, is the one who steps up to take it. Massive moment, this. Not just in this match, but in perhaps the outcome of the season for these clubs. Cotterill, cool as you like. Sheffield United lead again. Cotterill has his first goal for the club. And a massive step towards three points now for the Blades. Big moment, big pressure, and didn't he stand up to it? Well, he might think his team have been unlucky again. But that is a quality penalty. Send the keeper the wrong way. Right into the side netting. Absolutely superb, full of confidence, a lot of pressure, didn't look like it, did it? A massive result for everybody at the football club, and Sheffield United's next game was also going to be big, but for very different reasons, as the Blades had a chance to make history. Good play from Cottrell to hold the ball in. Sends the ball back to Quinn, Quinn delivers to the byline, here is Howard, goalkeeper's out of position, can he find a teammate, United chance second opportunity can they finish it finally Bromby guilty of not getting that over the line well did he get it over the line it looks like the linesman's given it deep free kick back post another header from the blades and a goal it's Chris Morgan 
battled through a challenge to get his head on that ball. And United's form away from home will continue. Coventry, quick header. Well, is there a sting in the tail of the Sky Blues? So it was a night of history for Sheffield United at Coventry City as they did extend that run away from home. A goalless draw against QPR kept it going. Then it was back home to face lowly Blackpool, where three points would keep the Blades in touch with the top two. Early corner to be taken by Cottrell towards the front post. Here is a chance. Alford flicks it home. May have possibly come off the defender on the way through. Doesn't really matter. Either way, Sheffield United lead this one. Blackpool. Edge of the area now trying to create something here. Breaks towards the edge of the box. United. Oh, massive deflection. They're level pegging. It's one each. Blackpool playing some much better stuff now. So they work the ball towards the edge of the air. It looked like there was a bit of handball in there, but the finish will come. Well, United a bit guilty there of not doing enough to contain DJ Campbell. Long ball forward. This could be a chance. It's an opportunity for Ward as he brought down. Well, he went flying. The keeper disagrees. But it will be a penalty kick. Cottrell rolls it in. No problem. United will get a point out of this. No questions now. Blackpool whip this one in. Good save, Kenny. Oh, he had to be alive to that. The Blades return to winning ways with a well-earned home victory against Derby County. Here is Cottrell, midway through the Derby half, loses it. And it's Connolly who strides forward for Derby. It's a good run as well, a powerful run. Sliding in his O'Toole, great tackle in midfield. Now Cottrell, crossing over halfway, faced by Savage and Barazzi. Skips by the pair of them and looks for Norton's run on the right-hand side. It's a great ball to the edge of the penalty area. Kyle Norton for the Blades, left-footed shot, and he scored! Kyle Norton, his first league goal for the Blades, and Sheffield United lead after just six minutes. A robotic celebration, a la Crouch, and what a strike on the left boot of Kyle Norton. What a start, what a finish. Sheffield United won, Derby County nil. Here is Connolly at halfway, dispossessed by Cottrell. Now Savage helps out. Ball sent straight up into the air. Savage now will turn a ball over halfway. Morgan heads away for United. Quinn brings it down. A blaze leading 1-0. O'Toole looking for a pass. He finds Henderson. Neat first-time ball out to Cottrell on the left-hand side. A chance to stretch those legs and get forward. And Maisie run to the bar line. Crossed in. Good delivery. Henderson! Sheffield United lead 2-0. David Cottrell with a terrific cross from the left-hand side and United lead by two with only 20 minutes gone. Terrific goal and Henderson thumps in his fifth goal of the season with his head at the Bramall Lane end. Blades two, Derby nil. And Derby come again, Connolly crosses in, Hulse on the stretch, couldn't divert it goalwards. Drops out on the left-hand side and Teal. Teal on the inside of O'Toole. Played in low. Kenny with a save. Stopped on the line. And then Rob Hall scores. It was nailed on, wasn't it, for the former Blade striker to come back and score at the lane. And he's done exactly that. And he puts Derby right back into it. As Kenny fires long. Ball one in the air by Todd. Now Savage hooks it over halfway. Davis receives it. Morgan looking to challenge. Push back to Savage, who floats a high ball out to the left for Teal to chase down. He might just get there ahead of Bromby. He does. He's 10 yards in from the byline. On his right boot, crossed in. Good delivery. Morgan, though, will race across and head away. Albrechtson rises in the air with that Terry Butcher style headband on now. Nyatanga looking to lift the ball over the head of Norton, who hooks it up to halfway for United. Bromby nodding over halfway. Now Albrechtson nods forward into Hulse. Challenged by Morgan. Hulse wanting a free kick. O'Toole gets United moving. Played to the left and Naismith. Into Jamie Ward who holds up the ball well for a small man. 
Cottrell dinks one over the top. Quinn will chase it down the left edge of the penalty area. Man in the box is Henderson. Back to goal, six yards out, turns and scores! Darius Henderson restores Sheffield United's two goal cushion. And it's in front of the cup. And Sheffield United now lead by three goals to one. Great ball in from the left hand side. Henderson back to goal, rolled his man and tucks it home from six yards out. Blades three, Derby one. Outside the box, crossed in towards the far post. Henderson was waiting. Cottrell inside the penalty area, left hand side. Chance to play the ball back in, maybe. Faced up by Barazic, crossed in by Cottrell over the head of Morgan and cleared away. But Henderson must have been thinking, here's my hat trick. Yeah, it's always a, it's a great thrill, you know, if you ever get one of them and he had, an, he had a chance there. Ball down the other end, Stephen Davis up against Bromby, beats him to the byline as well. Bromby lunges in, pull back. Oh, what a goal! Six yards out and it's Bannon from eight yards out, high into the roof of Paddy Kenny's net. I told you there was more twists and turns. Here's another one, Derby pull it back again. Blade three, Derby two. Edge of your seat stuff now as it's hit long by Bannon, high into the box. Penny comes for it, six yards out, and gets two hands on it. And the roar goes up as Paddy Kenny holds the ball above his head. Yeah, take your time, guys. Be sensible. Watford two Wednesday, too late equaliser for Sheffield Wednesday at Watford. Francis Jeffers with a penalty. Here's Holford for Sheffield United. He might go into the box. He's got options crossed into the far post. Only as far as Beatty, chance to settle it! And great Beatty scores for Sheffield United! Honours a sub, and he made no mistake, six yards out. That settles the nerves and makes sure that three big points stay in Sheffield too. And United kept the pressure up on the top two on its 120th birthday. A Sunday afternoon in Cardiff between two teams really battling it out in that top six for the possibility of a playoff place as United break up an attack. Here is Halford. Well, that's a good ball through and this could give Henderson the chance. Henderson into the box as he brought down. He is. It's the penalty kick. And it could be marching orders. Cardiff will be reduced to 10 men. Cottrell gives the Blades the lead in his hometown. Here's a corner kick. Jamie Ward. He's there at the front post. He's the smallest man on the field. It's 2-0 Blades. Cardiff down to nine men and plenty of space out there. Here's Craig Beatty. Stephen Quinn's into the area, he's on the angle! 3-0! And as United went into April, they moved into a well-deserved fourth place in the league, just two points behind Reading, and with a game in hand on second place Birmingham City. Jamie Ward returned to the starting lineup for their next home fixture against Ipswich Town, and United's winning form continued. United will curl this one in. Oh! Super Greg Halford. Stunning goal. Just looked up and then picked his spot. The bend and whip on this ball. Great strike. Clinical stuff. Quinn and Cottrell over the ball. Halford the man in the box as the ball is delivered into that six yard area. Ipswich just head it up in the air. United still challenged though, only as far as the edge of the area. Here's Norton, sends one towards the back post. Henderson's there. A powerful header from Darius Henderson. And Sheffield United double their advantage. United scrap for this one. Norton looked up there and he saw space at the back post and Henderson just comes onto it and curls it with his head into the far corner. Well worked goal. Halford who scored the first will toss this ball back into play. It's a long throw into the box as well. Header! Oh, super save. How does Jamie Ward get that much space in an area? It 
In comes the corner kick. It's headed towards goal. That's a great save, Paddy Kenny. At this point in the season, every win for the Blades was becoming increasingly vital. But this one was memorable, particularly for Greg Halford. What about the Ipswich goal? Talk us through it. <laughs> I've just picked it up on the edge of the box and the Ipswich has given me so much time. Um, you know, there was only one thought in my mind and, and that was to shoot. And lucky enough, uh, I hit it sweetly and uh, with a bit, bit of dip and whip and everything else that came along with it, I found the bottom corner. Well, he didn't have too much time to celebrate because just three days later, the Blades were back in action in a South Yorkshire derby against Barnsley. And once more, there was plenty of late drama. Barnsley have everybody back in their own area for this free kick from the left. It's clipped in towards the front post. Flicked on back post. Blades just wide. John Joe O'Toole at full stretch. I think he was onside. Macken, hook forward now to Andranic, possibly it is here maybe for Barnsley. Campbell Rice is the man over on the left-hand side, left edge of the penalty area, up against Kyle Norton. The delivery, well, it wasn't very good. Cleared away, here is Collas, just outside the D. Striking opportunity, Collas, it's blocked. Miss it inside the box from Collas' shot. Collas again, hit straight at Morgan, he's looking for a handball. Collas, the referee, well placed, having none of it. And United clear up to halfway. Here's Henderson in the centre circle. Steered out wide left to Holford, who will now run at Bobby Hassel. Holford for the blaze. Jamie Ward waits on the edge of the box, and Henderson's popped up as well into the area. Bobbled away off Muller. Should have been a routine save, that for me, but he made a right hash of it, Muller, but just about got away with it. Ward and Cottrell and Henderson are inside the Barnsley box. Morgan just joining it now. Holford... Sends one in deep. Jamie Ward, great save, Muller. Fingertip. Great header from Jamie Ward. Just found a little pocket of space. And Hines Muller was there, backpedalling to turn the ball away for a corner kick. Great save. Corner kick, right-hand side for United. Goalless at Bramall Lane. And the final South Yorkshire derby of the season as it goes into the box. Headed just over the top. Halford should have hit the target. Corner kick, Sheffield United. Ward will stroke it to the left corner of the box and Montgomery. Chipped into the area, headed away by Kozluk. O'Toole will challenge for it. Now Henderson back to goal on the edge of the box. Rolls in into midfield to Montgomery. Out to the left and Jamie Ward up against Kozluk. Ward heads towards the byline into the box. Good feed. Jamie Ward, good save, Muller. Palm behind for a corner kick. They're getting closer, but Barnsley hang on. Ten minutes left, nil-nil. Bromby's throw from the left. It's a long one towards the near post. Flicked on by Morgan. And great save. O'Toole then scrambled over the line. It's going to be a goal. And it's going to be John Joe O'Toole who celebrates in front of the top. It initially seemed as though it had been saved, but Sheffield United scrambled the ball over the line. And that might be enough to finish off Barnsley at the lane. It's John Joe O'Toole's first goal for the Blades. Into the last five minutes. Yeah, well, you, you do wish that Barnsley just uh, put a little bit more attacking intent into the game before the goal. And... Uh, you know, putting United under a little bit of pressure now. They've come out. I did say at half time they were worried about Barnes just sitting back and starting to absorb pressure. I mean, to be fair, United started to build up. Here's Hamill with a shot goal. Good save, Kenny. Fisher City cut him from the left, Hamill. And from 25 yards, let fly. And that had Kenny scrambling to his right to make the save. Yeah, great shot, wasn't it, from Hamill? And you feel that things can happen when he gets hold of the ball and Barnes have got to try and get him in the game in these last five minutes. But here is Sheffield United's live wire, Jamie Ward finding Norton on the right. Out to this near touchline in Holford, back in field and Norton again as Sheffield United try and get an attack going. It's Holford round the back of Kozluk. The cop stands to his feet, played in low, Lupule! Oh, it's two! A two-row Lupule scores! And that settles three big points! And the final South Yorkshire derby of the season! He scored against Sheffield Wednesday earlier this season! And the Italian strikes again with four minutes left to play! And without a shadow of a doubt, three points staying in Sheffield! Kozluk over it. And the Barnsley fans now beginning to disperse behind that goal. As Kozluk fires the free kick forward, right foot and high into the box, Darren Moore will jump for it. Is there a penalty? There is a late bit of drama here. And Darren Moore was fouled. A handball, was it? I thought Darren Moore tumbled in the box, but it will be a penalty to Barnsley. Penalty then at Bramall Lane. Just to make it a little bit interesting, maybe. 
Time though definitely not on Barnsley's side here. But Jamal Campbell-Rice with an opportunity to reduce the deficit. He missed on Saturday. Will he score tonight? The answer is no. He's missed again. Tipped round the post by Paddy Kenny, who will be delighted. And he is delighted. He's been congratulated by his teammates. You have to credit the save. It's a corner kick. Andranic will sweep it into the front post. Bogdanovic with the header and steered away by Henderson. Derek Parker. Well, I think it was a perfect height to save, Paul. I think it was slightly... It couldn't have got much worse than his penalty on Saturday, but... Uh, he went the right way, Kenny. I thought it was a comfortable save Mackens in the end. cross, Bogdanovic! He's pulled one back at the death for Barnsley. Cross from the right-hand side from Macken. Barnsley are in it, but time against them. United closed out that victory against Barnsley, and even the most ardent of Blades fan was starting to believe that just maybe, just maybe, there was a chance of a top-two finish, especially after a super performance at Reading. There was a lot riding on the game, you know, we'd, we'd been on a, again, we'd been on a, a, a good run and, you know, if we, if we beat Reading, we knew we were in with a, a massive chance of automatic promotion. And it was, we've got it clear, back through the crowd of players, oh, it's home for the score! Flag cut short his joy. Well, they didn't see it, did they? DK defending it well. Matejowski. Beatty. Turned on by Halford. Ward's cross to the far post. Kilgallen is still up there from the area. Set piece. Oh, it's uh, Sheffield United's turn to be denied by the woodwork, but they have snatched the first goal. Aaron, the scorer, a crucial, crucial strike. Well, they had got more positive. The substitution was a sign of that. And you thought they'd got away with it, Reading, when it came off the bar. But they had enough about them, and Howard in particular, to pounce and put his team 1-0 up. It's a decently worked ball here. It's a decent ball. It's a bubbly pitch and doesn't kill Gallon do well. Puts it back across, comes off the bar. You think they've got out of jail there, but he keeps it down, hits the target. Slight deflection by the look of it. This ball's not that bad because Gilgallon's there. Intelligent use of it back into the danger area. I think they've got away and there. Just a slight deflection. But this is the important bit. Gilgallon's header. Howard pounces on it, takes the pace off it. There is a deflection. And that confuses Hannah Vernon. They sent uh, Bromley back. So Kilgallen OK to continue That's for the it. moment. And Kenny at full stretch. Well, I'm sure he misjudged that. He certainly did. There you see, it looks routine this. Thought he was going to make a clean catch. Doesn't. No foul on him. beatty has been fouled. There's a throw-in or a free kick. Either way, Sheffield United keep possession and are almost home and dry. They are! There's the final whistle! A vital, vital win for Kevin Blackwell's team. Strong, solid, disciplined, organised and most importantly of all, in form. And how? Seven wins from their last nine games. Ten matches unbeaten, and for the first time this season, they move into an automatic promotion place, replacing Birmingham in second place on goal difference. On Easter Monday, the Blades missed out on an opportunity to really force home their pressure at the top of the table. A stubborn Nottingham Forest side held on for a share of the spoils in a goalless draw at the lane. United's automatic promotion hopes were further dented as their proud and beaten away record finally did come to an end at Burnley, live on Sky, on a Monday night. Well, there was plenty of disappointment that the run came to the end, but undoubtedly there was plenty of pride in that achievement of becoming the first team in the Blades' history to have such a great unbeaten run away from home. You know, I think uh, even after the game at Burnley, I think... 
n not taking anything away from Burnley, but I think it, we thought that it was us that had not performed on the night rather than uh, than Burnley that had been uh, really good. You know, especially sec second half. I think first half we, we weren't what we'd like, what we had been away from home. Second half we were a lot better, but you know, we just couldn't find that breakthrough. But uh, yeah, when you when you get on runs and you know, like I said before, when 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 the team's winning, you know, everybody's full of confidence, everybody's enjoying the football and, you know, and it just seems to it seems to snowball and go on. Yeah, obviously, coming in the team and um, that, that away record, you know. I mean, we, we said while it was going on, we just kept saying, you know, let's keep winning, let's keep, keep this record going and, um, you know, hopefully it'll be another 125 years till, till someone beats that. So that, that's, that was fantastic and I think that's helped propel us to the position we were at. Um, because I think we lost a lot of points at home, you know, earlier on in the season, which you know maybe would have resulted in automatic. United returned home to Bramall Lane to lick their wounds, and Roberto Martinez Swansea were the next side that they'd face. The Blades won the game. They scored a goal thanks to David Cottrell again from the penalty spot, and moved on to 79 points with just one game to go. United have played some good football so far today. Can they match it, though, with a decent bit of finishing? That's what they need. It's the plays do now working into the box as he brought down. Well, Stephen Quinn thinks so. The referee agrees. And David Cottrell is going to have the chance from 12 yards. There was minimal contact. But Cottrell scored against Birmingham. Cottrell scored against Cardiff. Can Cottrell score against Swansea? The Welsh winger fires home. Blades have the lead. And Cottrell continues to keep that calm head under pressure. Another great penalty kick. What about these penalties? Because all of a sudden you, you took that one, you demanded that one, and, and you slot it away nicely. You've had s several others since then. What's your philosophy when you put the ball down? Um, well, I just stick to my corner and um, I just know if I put enough pace on it, then the, if the keeper do get there, then it's, it's still going to go in anyway. So it's just concentrating on putting the ball in the back of the net for the team. How nervy was it, particularly in that, that Birmingham game when everything was on the line? Um, it wasn't too bad, really. I kept, kept a cool head and um, I managed just to slot the ball away nicely. But in those sort of circumstances, you just got to keep your head and just concentrate on hitting the target. And what about the last one, the last penalty you scored here? Another high-pressure situation, but again, you're able to slot it away. Yeah, it's, it's just the same, really. You just got to keep your focus and just make sure you slot it away because um, if we'd have drawn that game, then we wouldn't have been going to the, the final game with sort of um, going for automatic. So it's it nice to take it to the last game. Which was sweeter, scoring against Cardiff, scoring against Swansea? Swansea, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Care to expand? Uh, well, I was brought up in Cardiff, obviously, with um, all my family and friends are, are Cardiff fans as well, so um, it was nice to score against the Jacks. So with one game to go, the Championship has again proved it's the most competitive league in football. Still plenty of opportunity for Sheffield United to get into the automatic promotion places. All they had to do was win at Crystal Palace and hope that Birmingham got a worse result in their match against Reading. Surely that couldn't be too much to ask. But what a final day it would be for United. A return to their former manager, Neil Warnock, who would no doubt want to get a share of the spoils. But of course, one eye was always going to be on that game between Birmingham and Reading. Here's Halford. Now Norton, who like Halford, normally operates on the right. Up towards Henderson, who won the header. Ward was looking to get in there. No foul, though, by Fonte. Well, an early penalty shout, Henderson does what he does best, wins it. Ward tries to get across, and I think just Fonte he stands his ground, he's strong, and for me that's decent defending. Walker's throw in towards Henderson. It certainly seemed to be that Henderson's shirt was being grabbed there by McCarthy, and he feels it was a penalty. And was he right? There, there's his shirt coming off his back, two hands on him, there's a shot from Cottrell, but straight away the reaction, there's his shirt being pulled, he, he thinks he's being pushed as well, there's Cottrell's shot over the top. And Ward tried to steer it in, it's a magnificent stop. And this is terrific reaction save from Peroni, it's drilled in, there's the header down, it's a good head. Look at Ward, which he scored. 
did exactly the right thing, downward head, and look at that for a reaction from Spironi. That's good goalkeeping, good call, good early call from Paddy Genny. Took the pressure off Kilgallen. Here's Cottrell. It's a great run from David Cottrell! Deserved better. That certainly did. Terrific run, wasn't it? Jinkin run. So difficult to knock off the ball. Comes from wide. Goes past one. Just checks inside here. Gets his shot away and Speroni's just scrambling across. Wasn't sure, was he? There. Good hit across the goalkeeper. Doesn't hit the target with it. Kevin Blackwell knows how close that was. He was right in line with that. But they've just stepped it up, haven't they? Montgomery, Quinn, Ward! Denied by the feet of Spironi. He must wonder what he's got to do to beat this goalkeeper. Unbelievable save again. That's why I said he's one of the best in this division. corner, Henderson blocked off, the referee not interested. Well, that man feels he's been sinned against. You see him going to attack this now. There, the arm goes across, no attempt to play the ball. I not on the ball, that's a pen. Every day of the week. By staying well, they have to do all that they can here and then trust ready to do something for them. Danza stayed down, but he's being ignored as the kick goes in and Morgan rises and hits the post! Well, he had one in a similar area, but what a header this is. He attacks it superbly. There's everything right where it came, back where it came from. You think it's going to drift in and just clips the post. Birmingham City are up. It's finished at the Medeski Stadium, so no matter what Sheffield United do now, it's all over for them in terms of automatic promotion. It will be the playoffs. In the end, it was Birmingham's victory that spoiled the Blades' chances of automatic promotion, not Neil Warnock. But for Kevin Blackwell, there wasn't long to dwell on that Palace game. Last day of the season, you against Neil Warnock. There was always going to be a great one for the headline writers and, and the media pundits. What was it like going down to Palace, knowing that you still had a shot of, of getting into that top two? Well, I'd made my comments that I felt if we could be top ten at Christmas, top six at Easter, we'd give it a good go and see if we could get to automatic. That's exactly what happened. So I was delighted that that was actually the case. But then to go down to, press, uh, to, to, to Crystal Palace and Spironi then to get man of the match, having save after save and arguably some unbelievable penalty decisions that haven't gone our way. Mm. All right, in the end it didn't matter because, because Birmingham won, but it would have been nice to have got that goal up before Birmingham did to see how they would have been able to respond. But once again, you know, uh, Carl Walker coming in, only his third professional game uh, for, for, for Sheffield United in, in a massive, massive game, and I thought he was superb. And once again, we went to an away, away pitch and you thought we were the home team. We were the more forceful, dominant and uh, only right because we had such a massive prize for it. But it just eluded us. But uh, we then went into the semi-finals and uh, many people felt that it would have such a detrimental effect that they couldn't really see us beating Preston over the two legs. And that Preston, having got in on such a high in the last game of the season, that they were really on the up and we were on the down. But that proved to be far from the case. and turn by Ward very difficult ball to deal with it's worked it's a foot across Henderson it's a great little touch sets up the shooting opportunity it's a big big outstretched leg from Andy Lonergan keeps his team level super goalkeeping St Ledger, the man who got them into the playoffs, has got them ahead in the playoffs. It's a Sheffield United head that flicks that on and that's a brilliant decision, I have to say. And it's a cool, it's an easy finish in the end. And it's Greg Halford, I think, that gets caught. Just leaves it, he's got the wrong side of St Ledger, hoping for the offside, but it's not going to come. 
I think it's Nick Montgomery it comes off. There it is. And thank you very much, Shorten Ledger. And that's just what Preston North End needed. And this is probably scored a few more goals in the Premier League when he was there with Watford than he actually managed. Good technique and that's Howard. It was Quinn rather, sorry, on his right side and it's the corner. And the Sheffield United supporters were up. They saw the ripple of the net and they thought it was in. And it's brilliant play, isn't it? Stephen Quinn, who's got seven league goals already, tries to beat him at the near post. Is up again. That's hit the post from Parkin. And Sheffield United, so good at the set plays, have conceded from one and very nearly conceded from another here. Now to take it. And Morgan. And a chance for Ward. On the second ball from the captain's header. Well, he can't believe they're not level, can he? And Jamie Ward must have thought a couple of times now. He'd scored for Sheffield United as it drops here. It's a decent turn. It's a big, big touch. 1-0 to Preston North End. A quarter of the way through. This two-legged semi-final play of his. Halford, can he reach it? He did. Lonergan made a smothering save. And it is... A very well taken goal by Brian Howard, the man for the big occasion as he was with Barnsley. He scored for Sheffield United in the opening seconds of the second half. Well, for me, Preston North End have been caught cold here. There's absolutely no doubt about it. There are one or two players that really switch off. Henderson wins the flick on, and that's a brilliant ball. And I think he's done the wrong thing there, actually. Just for a second, the chance is gone, but fair play that gets help back into the middle and Brian Howard, how often do you see him arriving on the scene at just the right time, there he is in the middle and he breaks into the box and he's got a, a brilliant contact on that he's made it look an awful lot easier than it was Brian Howard as this comes across, perfect contact and Sheffield United are level There's a ball on to beat it and they found him, it's beat it he wants a penalty, thinks he was pulled, he probably thinks, he probably knows he should have scored. I personally thought, as that was played, I thought he was offside, I thought he got ahead of the ball. And this is going to give us a better idea as it's played, no he's not, it's a brilliant decision again by the assistant referee. And having got the wrong side of Ewan Mawene, got to hit the target, that's a minimum, minimum requirement when you get yourself in that situation. There's a big tug, didn't go down, credit, stayed on his feet, should have scored. McKenna. Oh, Trojan work by Montgomery. There's no flag here and it's Beattie. Lupul is in the middle, but Beattie goes for the goal himself. No. And Lonergan Look reads his mind. Look at Lupul. Lupul is absolutely raging. He has got to square this ball. If he squares the ball, Lupul has got a tap in. That's a bad, bad decision by Craig Beattie. Again, we have to say what a brilliant decision by the assistant. But he's got to square it there. He's got, he's got a tap in. I can't believe that he hasn't lifted his head, Craig Beatty. He knows, doesn't he? He's certainly been told. With so many games played and Sheffield United starting to feel that injury bite, they were forced into two changes to the team in the return leg. The strikers Henderson and Ward were both out, their places taken by Cottrell and Beatty. The carnival atmosphere inside the lane, though, didn't disappoint. Quinn. Now Kyle Norton towards the back post where Cottrell is waiting. And Henley behind 
for the corner by St. Ledger. Sheffield United attacking the end where all the Preston fans are gathered. Too long for Kilgallen. Morgan is attacking it. Foul by him. Free kick Preston. And Morgan and Malweni this time swapping a few verbals. This is really getting feisty. Just remember, it's the second leg of the playoffs. It's bound to get feisty. Bound to. Well, Malweni has to be strong. He knows Chris Morgan's behind. A little nudge in the back and then Morgan carries on. He's Ooh. damps down on the leg. I think he's genuinely trying to get the ball. Moweni, not happy. Naughty, naughty. I'm not sure Moweni was convinced he was only trying to win the ball, was he? <laughs> oh, this time. Halford is down again. And this is really beginning to simmer. And Alan Wiley's going to have to use all his Premier League experience to just keep the lid on things here. This is the boot, isn't it? High bouncing ball. Billy Jones is at the back and John Park and it's the follow through. It's the follow through. He's saying he got the ball, he did get the ball, but he followed through. That's what's left Halford in pain. Still not happy complaining to the referee, but it's all under control. Goes past Nolan. Great little piece of wing play from him. And really well defended by Sean St. Ledger. But there's more defending to do. It's Cottrell again. And almost on that far post, Halford attacking it. No one applied the touch, but very good defending by Preston. Well, Andy Lonergan applauds Billy Jones because he needs to know and stay strong. He knows that Greg Halford is right behind him, but look at that. He stays strong and sees it out. That is really good, strong defending. That was a fantastic ball into the box. But good defending, and look at that goalkeeper applauding, and Kevin Blackwell thinks it's going in. Brian Howard this time. Five players waiting in the middle. Here comes the cross. Can they get it right this time? Can it by Beatty? This is an absolutely brilliant cross, as good as it gets, and Beatty does everything right, heads it down, Andy Lonergan is nearly diving too early, watch the way this bounces up, nearly bounces over him, but give him credit, that is an absolutely brilliant save. Not only does he get a hand on it, he palms it up and away and out of the onrushing Sheffield United forward. Great football all round. Here's Walker. Halford was the target. It's not really away, it's come out here to Norton. Now Cottrell. Walker, good looking ball in, and it's a goal! Greg Halford for Sheffield United! And you can hear the roar all the way into Sheffield City Centre. That's the goal that could take Sheffield United to Wembley. Oh, I'll tell you what, this crowd have nearly lifted the roof off, haven't they? Nobody can say this has not been coming, but at last, they get the ball out wide. Dion Dublin at half-time spoke about the quality coming in. Well, this is absolute quality from young Walker. And all Halford has to do is get some kind of decent contact on this, and he does it supremely well. And Andy Lonergan can get absolutely nowhere near that. That is an absolutely brilliant header, but it comes from an absolutely brilliant cross. And Sheffield United have got the deserved lead made the manager bounce and rightly so he must be bouncing well he's knocked from pillar to post in the first half Greg Halford he scored in the second it's his eighth goal of the season now when he to launch it forward towards parking he shot on the turn and a smart save from Kenny there might be something for Preston here but there is the threat all the time the margins won Beatty chance for a second here for Sheffield United still that chance go down can they get it and off the line in the end by St. Ledger how did Sheffield United not score again there been in the thick of it hasn't he Beatty as he comes inside there he pulled down and then he swings a leg. The Blades are going to Wembley. Halford is the hero. His header.
Enough! Enough! The Kevin Blackwell side! Heartbreak for Preston North End who tried so very, very hard and amid a pitch invasion here. And that was it. The Blades booked their place at Wembley and a first appearance at the new stadium on Bank Holiday Monday. Tens of thousands of United fans bought their tickets to be part of the second biggest ever playoff final crowd. Widely known as the richest game in football, United knew they were just 90 minutes away from making their way back to the Premier League. Terrific run by Wade Elliott. Now McCann joins the party. It's McCann for Burnley. Kilgallen, great challenge. Elliott! Oh, yes! A cracking Burnley goal. The playoff final comes to life. Wade Elliott for Burnley. A dart into the box. Mike Dean takes a look at it. And they were adamant they should have had something. Sheffield United. Look at Brian Howard. are going to appeal for everything but he gets the wrong side and is there a clip by Alexander on the back there that's the kind of instant view that Mike Dean he's got to make a snap decision this time it's more direct it's headed goalwards and they just couldn't make up that final touch it was the fullback Duff who very nearly got the telling touch. Patterson. Good Johnson, he's got a lot of space in that heart of midfield for Burnley. Back to Patterson. Thompson waits in the middle. Joey Good Johnson in there too. Thompson! Good Johnson! Oh! Montgomery turns it away! Massive moment in this playoff final. in knots and keeping that in. Now, break on here. Robbie Blake in the middle. Thompson gets his head up. It's Robbie Blake! Oh, what a wonderful challenge by Walker. Sheffield United still one down. Wait on the goal early in the second half. It's a wonderful run by Walker. Down he goes in the box. Waved away by Mike Dean. with the calmest man in the stadium it's a wonderful run by Walker is there a little coming together Calvin is as he leans in to Kyle Walker and at that speed you've seen them given to say uses his body Calvin has arm across leans in you've seen them Kevin but look Mike Dean again if anything it's on the blind side and he hasn't seen enough to give it Well, got his head to it first, the Burnley captain now Eagles, they try to take him down but they can't do so, look at that run from Patterson on the far side, he's on his own at the moment Martin Patterson, two for company, but he's full of confidence, it's Patterson for Burnley, another fantastic block, this time by Norton. Kilgallen, clever ball, Jamie Ward, flag is up, another use of the hand. He's got to be careful as Mike Dean's going to send him off here. He's sent off two deliberate handballs. Jamie Ward off the bench. And handing his way off the pitch. Mike Dean saying he has no choice. And by the letter of the law, he's absolutely right. right. Uh, Mike Dean sent off Matt Kilgallen in controversial circumstances in the Sheffield derby. Is this controversial? No, it's not. It's a deliberate handball. And I don't think the referee has got any choice whatsoever. There will be a new name at the Premier League table next season. So Wade Elliott's first half goal was the difference between the two sides on the day. 
It left many fans leaving Wembley Stadium heartbroken, as well as manager Kevin Blackwell. You lick your wounds now. What energises you for another fight, another battle, another 46 I could tell you that the, the week after this has been terrible. I, I can't, you know, I've been very low, I'll be honest with you, you know, to see that and being able to smell the Premier League, see it, but can't touch it is, is, is the worst. But, you know, beginning of this week, it's a week after now and you get back to the stadium, back to the ground and all of a sudden the buzz is starting to go again, the phones are coming. So, you know, I've been here before and done it again and I'll, I'll, I'll go and do it again. Simple as that. What do you have to do to your team over the summer months to, to get you back? I mean, it's a harder championship than ever with the teams well, that have come down. What, what, what do you have to do? Well, maybe more exciting. Maybe more things to look forward to. So there's, there's a lot of things that are, you know, we haven't gone up, but there's a lot of other things you look back and think, well, this is some division now with Middlesbrough, Newcastle, West Brom back down and Leicester coming back up. And, you know, it's such a strong league and uh, we've got to be at it. Simple as that. So my job now is uh, there's been five loans have gone back. The three lads or four lads who are out of contract, they've all gone. So I need to bring in six, seven, eight, maybe nine players um, because obviously throughout the season we were cutting the squad down and... Uh, you soon find that out at the end of the season when you look around and think, oh, there's only 13 or 14, but I've got a good, good, strong 13 or 14, a good nucleus, and now we've got to get the quality to, to add to it. And if we can, then I'm, I'm sure and confident that we can have another good go next season.